So we're at our distillery in Knoxfield where we produce our gin and our whiskey and all our delicious spirits. Great, can you show me how it's done? Let's do it. So, Damien, it's pretty incredible that, like, four years ago, none of this existed. Yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty exciting uh, the last four years, from, from a start-up to, to where we are now at Tiny Bit Distillery. Five years ago, you were a teacher, right? Yeah, I was a high school chemistry teacher. It's definitely a change of working with kids who don't want to be at school yeah. to, you know, working with adults who love what they do and, and bringing people in and having a lot of fun. So, why, how, gin? How did Tiny Beer come to life? I've always been obsessed with spirits. So it's not just gin, it's, it's probably spirits overall. It's the science of, of how we do it is what I'm in love with first, but then the products we create is my second love. So four years in, tell me about the team. How many people are working for Tiny Bear and uh, who makes up the, the core team? So we have a, a several production staff who are distilling, bottling, labelling uh, and then running through tastings. And then we have a second venue, which is a bar and a bottle shop where we've got a, a, a second spot, spot of team, I guess, which is a craft bar craft bottle shop, so you think cocktails, think Australian produced spirits, Australian produced beers, wines. I'm just thinking about all the news that must have come into your world over the last four years, going from being in the classroom to running a small business. What's been the biggest challenge for you over that journey, would you say? The biggest challenge is always uh, finding and working with staff. There's a lot of versatility in what we do because we've got production here, we've also got front of house, we've got, um, you know, tastings. You can have someone who's awesome at creating a product but not the most comfortable working with cu with customers in a market where, you know, um, unemployment's really quite low. It's, mm. it's hard to find staff. It's hard to find staff that want to do all the different things we need them to do. And talk to me a bit about market forces. What's the, the competition like in your space? The market is constantly changing. Four years ago when we started, there was, you know, a minute amount of uh, producers in Victoria. That, that number since then has probably um, tripled, quadrupled. So wow. there's, there's a hell of a lot of movement in, in the Australian spirits industry. But with that increased uh, presence, there's also uh, increased demand for, for Australian produced products. So I'd love to delve a little bit more into the people challenges, but first I'm really eager to understand the actual process side of the business. Can you talk me through it? Yeah, of course. So we're currently standing in front of our fermenters, but let's actually get into the distillery and I'll run you through how we do it all. So when it comes to producing gin, it's, a, it's basically a, a three-step process. We have to ferment, which was in front of the tanks where we were before, mm -hmm. but the backbones of it is yeast uh, eating sugar and producing alcohol. So in those big tanks, we add um, those, those ingredients and we, we leave them for about two weeks. We then pump into these two stills here, okay. where we basically boil the ingredients. Gotcha. So the alcohol boils, it turns to a gas, and it travels up these columns. And we're then able to collect that gas on the other side, and we're able to collect the alcohol at about 95% proof. That whole piece you just talked us through there is pretty unique to what Tiny Bear do and how you work. Yeah. Very early on, we made the decision to do every single step ourselves. And that process is quite an expensive process, but it gives us a different product. It gives us a, a, a product that is, is uniquely ours. And can you tell me a bit about the tasting room? Yeah, so we've got a small uh, tasting space here for about 18 seats, but we do have a bigger tasting lounge uh, up the road where we're able to get in a lot more people and, and show them our products. What's the capacity of that? So that's uh, 70 seats in that one compared to about 18 here. Great. Can we go have a look? Yeah. So tell me about where we are now. So we're sitting upstairs at Tiny's Bar and Bottle Shop. This is our upstairs bar mm -hmm. where it, it kind of does a little bit of the tasting for the distillery, but it also functions as a cocktail lounge. And so what business problem did this solve or what opportunity was this seizing for you? So this gave our customers a place to come to us outside of our hours of the distillery. So this is open late at night. This is open, you know, Tuesday to Sunday. And it also increases the profit margin on the products that we make. What's keeping you up at night at the moment? Cash flow would be my number one thing that keeps me awake at night. It's great in spring through to, you know, February when the, when the weather's good, because mm -hmm. people are out drinking, people are out having a good time. But then when you get into the leaner times, you've still got the same amount of staff you want to keep on. Mm. You've still got expensive expenses. If anything, production increases because we've got the staff to do it, which mean then production costs increase. And you've been saying as well to me that it's really been a new level of people challenge since the start of the year with just the difficulty getting staff. Yeah, difficult getting staff and then those that you can get training. Training, 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 and it's 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 very hard to do that across two different spaces. And so, is the challenge attracting staff full stop, or is it retaining staff? I, I would say it's attracting staff. So, it, attracting the right staff members who are who are open to you know uh, being a jack of all trades. And then once we've got them, we're building up that strength, building up that communication, building up that ability to work in a really diverse environment. 
And from a people standpoint, how are you trying to tackle the, the difficulty on the staff shortage at the moment? What's the strategy? Create an environment that is something that people want to work in. So I think to close out today, there'd be two things that'd be really great to focus on during my next visit. Um, one would be, I think it would be great to have a conversation around this kind of strategic discipline, for the want of a better phrase. So we talked about cash flow challenges, the, the different opportunities you have ahead of you now for growth. It'd be really useful to bring some of the leadership team together and have that conversation around, okay, what do we want to put our eggs in the baskets of? And what do we want to actually put a line through? You know, in saying no to these things, we can truly say yes to what we believe will be the drivers of our growth over the next couple of years. So I think that would be a really great conversation. The second would be delving in with some of your staff, and I encourage you to do this in the lead up to our conversation. What's their why for being a part of the Tiny Bear Distillery family? And are there nuggets of gold in there? And why they love their job and why they get out of bed and why they see there being great benefit working across the two sites that we can think about using as part of the storytelling of the brand and actually not just making it about the product, but also making it about the team and the experience that people can come in and be a part of. So I think that would be a really helpful way of starting to to change the, um, the situation that you're having with some of the staff shortages by just letting it be known a little bit more about what the experience is actually like to be a part of the team here. Yeah, awesome. I, I think that, that would make logical sense and I think it's a direction we do need to take.